Hi, I'm Alex from Genius TV here in Orlando, Florida. I'm with you today to walk through just a very basic basis for a human torch effect in Apple Motion. To do that, I've got my talent that was shot on a fairly rudimentary green screen. And I've got a couple of pieces of just stock flame photography. Uh, you can't go wrong with these stock libraries, especially for flame elements. All right, so let's go ahead and bring our talent into the project. To pull a basic key in motion, what you're going to want to use is the Primat key. That's under Add Filter, Keying, and Primat RT. And we see that already knocks out the background fairly well. Uh, it has gone a little bit overboard in trying to suppress the spill of green light and turned everything purple. So I'm going to crank the spill, su spill suppression slider down just a tad. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with what it's done in terms of the key. So let's go ahead and scrub through the image. She extends her hands, and then there's this little flapping action going on in the bottom right-hand corner. I want to use a garbage mask to get rid of all this stuff around the outside of the image, as well as this flapping action, but I want to keep when she extends her hands out. I want to keep her hands in the picture. So I'll go ahead and use a Bezier mask to get as close as I can. We could refine this further, but honestly, uh, even if it's slightly off, yeah, we catch a little bit there, it's alright for the purposes of this tutorial. Now let's go ahead and bring in our field of flame. So back to Finder, bring in that field of flame. I'm going to go ahead and bump it back just a tad to where it starts revealing on, so we have something to look at. And we see it pretty quickly turns into a field that would cover her entire the space of her entire body there. We've already sort of defined our cookie cutter for the shape of our talent's body here. Now what we want to do is go ahead and cut out this flame in her shape. To do that, from the object menu, pick Add Image Mask. And we see over in the Image Mask Inspector that it would like a mask source. In this case, we want her outline, so we'll drag her layer into that source well. And we see as we scrub through, the flame has taken her outline. Well, it's a start. Uh, it's got a little James Bond going on, I guess, but we do want to go ahead and bring some of her texture in if we can as well. Fortunately, there are some distortion filters that are quite good at doing that procedurally. So be sure your flame layer is selected. Go up to Add Filter, and under Distortion, either Bump Map or Displace might accomplish something like this. I prefer Bump Map for this purpose. And we see over in the Filter Inspector that it would like a map image. And it's saying, where do you want me to take this texture from? In this case, again, we want her uh, shot there. So we'll drag her shot into that map image well. And we already see the beginnings of some texture in her face. Let's go ahead and crank up that amount slider to have her texture more strongly influence the flame layer. I'll do a quick RAM preview render here just to get us some, some motion. Not bad for three or four minutes work. From this point, there are any number of ways we can continue to enhance this image. Perhaps the most obvious might be to put some type of fringe or edge around her, uh, or perform some type of reveal, transitioning between her original image and this flame-based image. Uh, another option might be to bring in more stock flame photography, which actually is quite easy. I'll go ahead and drag in that little fireball we had going. The nice thing about using different flame elements, if you're okay with a black background, is you can take the quick and dirty shortcut, just use the lighten blend mode to composite all these different flame based elements. You could keyframe this ball to stay in her hand, for example. Uh, any number of places we could go from here. In fact, it might also be worthwhile to bring in some extra flames just to be uh, emerging from the back of her as she moves her arms. At any rate, this is a good foundation, illustrates some good compositing principles for you. Uh, if you have any next steps that you'd like to perhaps cover in a future tutorial, leave them in the comments and we'll see what we can do. Till next time, I'm Alex. It's Genius TV. Be sure and visit us at GeniusTV.com for uh, everything you could possibly want to know about motion graphics, compositing, video editing, uh, and all elements of the post-process.